Welcome everyone. I'm Irene Pasternak teaching Feldenkrais with Northwest Parkinson's and today I'm doing a lesson that helps with walking, with balance, and with eyesight and with being able to um, feel free enough as you're walking to look in every direction so that you don't feel quite as uh, compelled to, to look down as you walk. Um, so to start with, we're going to do just a little bit to relax our eyes because then your eyes will be able to sense what we're doing in the rest of the workshop more clearly. So to, to do this, we're going to put the palm of a hand, oh, you have to take your glasses off to do it, but I'm just going to demo with the glasses on. Um, you put the two palms over your eyes with your fingers crossed, trying to use your fingers to block out all of the light to make it as dark as possible. So some of you I see taking your fingertips on your eyes, that's not gonna work as well as your palm. So this little piece is called palming because you put the palm right over each eye socket and then close. Yeah, there you go. And it'll probably take both hands and you might have to wiggle your fingers a little bit to try to block out the light and close your eyes with your hands over them like that. And imagine that you're looking into a deep, dark cave and you're trying to sense the darkest place that's in there. And many times when we first start this at the beginning of a class, there's little lights and zigzaggy things or sometimes a plaid or a checkerboard or interesting patterns can pop up and as we get more relaxed the, it get we are able to have it get darker and darker so just think of dark velvet just a comfortable darkness and breathe a little as you're doing that And then take your hands off, come to the front of your chair, knees wide. So if you look down at your thighs, there should be air beneath your thighs, not chair. Okay. And blink a few times just to see how the light comes in to your eyes and get a sense of how wide your vision is. So if you're looking straight ahead, how far out to the sides can you see? And how far up and down do you see? And as you move your eyes up and down a little, does it feel like effort to move them up and down? Is there a stiffness, like the eye joint is, is stiff, or does it feel liquid and fluid? Okay. And take your right foot and take your right toes and go to the right with them. And then come back. And notice how much of your body knows that your right toes a pivot on the heel. How much of your body knows the toes are going over to the right? Is it just in the ankle and the knee perhaps? Do you feel something in your low back or your shoulders? And then try that on the left. Just feel, is this an easy movement for you or does it feel stiff in your hip or some other place? I'm going to just mute everybody. Where's that mute all button? Participants, that's where it lives. Mute all. So if you want to ask a question, just um, uh, unmute yourself if you, if you want to talk during the lesson. Okay. And take, close your eyes and take a breath in. See which parts of your body expand as you breathe. In particular, 
how wide does your chest get when you breathe in? Does it change its width or does it stay the same? And then come on up to standing. And in standing, see how wide your vision is. Is it narrower or wider than when you were sitting? And how tall is your vision? Is it bigger vertically in standing or was it bigger in sitting? And then go for a walk and pay attention to the width of your stride as you're walking. How far, a pe uh, how f far apart are your feet? And sense how your hips move as you're walking. Do you feel a left rightness? Is there a turning, an up down in the hips? Just anything you feel. And get a sense of the width of yourself as you're walking. Like how big a door would you would you fit through without having to do something to make yourself narrower. How wide are you? And then tune in for a moment to your feet, whether you're sitting or standing, and just feel where the weight is on your feet. You can just come to standing or in sitting. Where's is there more weight on the heel of your right foot or on the ball? the outside edge or the inside edge? How about on your left foot? Okay. And most of today's lesson is gonna be done in standing. We will take sitting breaks. If standing gets uncomfortable at any point, just sit down. You can do the lesson in sitting and I will give you the suggestions for what to do in sitting as well. But as you're standing there or sitting, take your right heel and move it out to the right. It's a funny little movement to move the right heel to the right. So you're pivoting on your toes for the right heel. And if, if you feel a little insecure in your standing, feel free to stand near a wall where you can put a hand lightly on your wall or on the back of your chair. So you take just the heel to the right, and once you get it to the right, put all your weight on that right leg. It's kind of a strange way to stand with the heel out to the right and your weight out on the right. And notice, where are you looking? And does your tongue or your teeth do something? So come back to neutral, and then take that right heel out again and see if your tongue or your teeth do something. And don't move your chest or your head. Try it, just do the heel out a few times. And then begin as you take your heel to the right, turning your chest and your head and your eyes to the left. So as your heel goes out to the right, your chest and head and eyes go to, the, go to the left. And for some of you, it might be hard to get your heel out. There might be too much friction under your foot. If you need to lift your whole foot and then set it down so that the heel is out further than the toes on the right. And how far back to the left do your eyes see? Notice what they feel like with, with this foot in this funny position as you look to the left. Okay, notice if there's any tension in your body. Are there any parts that have this feeling like, oh, I'd really like to move, but you're not letting me. And let those move. As the heel is out, your weight's on your right foot and you're turning left. 
And then go for a little walk. Feel what walking feels like. If you're sitting, um, okay, everybody's standing, so I don't need to do the sitting. Does one hip swing a little more than the other? Is there something, some different sensation left and right? Come back to standing. And just as you're standing, is it easier for your eyes to turn right or to turn left? Okay, now turn your whole right leg again. So you turn the, the heel out, the toes in, and put all your weight on the right foot and look to the left again. And this time when you look left, stay turned left. And look, turn your head to look toward one shoulder and then toward the other shoulder. So your shoulders stay turned, but just your head is moving left and right. Come back to the front, bring everything back to the front. Take your foot the same way again, the heel out, the toes pointing in a little. Turn your head left, stay left. And this time leave your head still and take your shoulders left and right. So your, your, your head stays turned to the left, but your shoulders move left and right a little bit. Bring everything back to the middle and go for a walk and feel for differences between the left and the right. And then sit down for a moment. And in sitting, take your right heel out and see what that feels like. And then compare it to taking your left heel out. Does it feel a little bit more comfortable on the right side than the left? And in sitting, do you want to look to the left or do you want to look to the right? All right, palm your, hand, your eyes again. So you put your, the palms over your eyes, cross your fingers, look for that deep dark black. And just keep trying to make it darker, blocking out light with your fingers, thinking about peering deep into a cave. Okay, let that go. And feel for differences in your eyes, just of whether they want to turn left or turn right. If one moves a little easier. Any, any sensation, one's heavier, lighter. Okay, and come back to standing. And this time, turn your right heel out again, but do it so that it's uh, your whole right foot's a little bit behind your left foot. And put your weight on the right foot. Your feet should be about as wide as your hips. Okay, and come back, bring your foot back. And then try doing the same thing on the left side, taking your left heel out. And just feel what's different when you do this on your right side now and when you do it on your left side. You could make it like a little dance of one side than the other. Okay, 
So take your right foot out again, the right heel goes out. This time keep your chest and your head forward and just move your leg and foot. So your leg goes to neutral and then the right heel out and watch for what your eyes do. If there's some connection between the eyes and the foot. Okay, and then take the left foot heel out and back, kind of pivoting on the front of your left foot, feeling what your eyes do. And then letting your head and your eyes turn to the right as you take your left heel out. And do that a few times, seeing if you can find the connection between the heel out and your torso and your head and eyes looking to the right. Okay, rest for a second standing. Then take your heel, your left heel out again. Let your head and your eyes turn. And while the turn has happened, um, take just your head and look over one shoulder and look over the other shoulder. It's back and forth over the shoulders. Bring your foot back under you. Take the left heel left again, put your weight on the left side, turn your head and shoulders to the right, and now leave your head and eyes looking to the right and take your shoulders and go one forward, one backward. While your head and your eyes are still looking right. If you can move your shoulders independently of your head and eyes. Good. Get your feet back under you again. And now put that left heel out and your arms can be long by your side. And as you turn to the right, let your arms swing right. Let them be soft so that they actually swing. And then bring your heel in and your arms come to the front. So you take your left heel out and your arms swing right. Okay, now leave your left heel out and with your left heel out, swing your arms right and left. Okay, good. Let's try that a little on the other side. So take your right heel out, put your weight right, and swing your arms left and right while your heel is out. Okay, go for a walk. And notice if the width of your stride is changing. If, um, Something feels loose or different in your hips and the, and the ability for the hips to go forward and back as you walk. You might feel a little narrower in your walk. Okay, come back to standing. And turn your right heel out like we've been doing, pivoting on your right leg. And I just got lost in where I was, just a sec. Come to sitting for a moment. Begin to take your right toes and go left and right with them. Kind of like a windshield wiper on the floor. And close your eyes as you do this and see if you can feel 
how there's a way that when your toe goes to the left, your belly pulls in a little. And when your toes go to the right, you push your belly out a little. Go ahead and, and sit down if you're standing for, for this piece. And begin to notice what your eyes are doing. Do, does your head and your eyes turn the way your foot is? Are your head and your eyes still? Let's deliberately take our head and our eyes with the foot. So when your foot goes right, your eyes go right, your head goes right. Uh -huh. And you've got three parts that are moving, the foot, the head, and the eyes. Do they all move at the same speed? Or are the eyes either leading the way or following? See if you can time this so that your eyes, your foot, and your head all move at exactly the same speed and get to the end point at exactly the same moment. And feel for sensations in your throat, in your face. It takes a lot of concentration to get the three moving together. Good, rest for a moment. Close your eyes and take a breath in. And see if the right side feels different than the left. Let's take the left foot out and in. Again, seeing if you can find the connection between your sit bones and your foot, your belly and your foot. So when your foot comes to the right, your left foot goes right, you go behind your sit bones a little. When your left foot goes left, you come in front of your sit bones a little. Rest for a moment. And then begin to do the same movement with the foot and let your head and your eyes go with your foot. Close your eyes. Your, your eyes can still be turning even with them closed, but you can sense more and sense if the eyes are leading or if the eyes are following. and try and make them exactly the same so that the eyes, foot, and head all start moving at the same millisecond and end moving at the same millisecond. And that they all travel the same distance, the same speed. And rest for a moment. Rest with your eyes closed. Take a breath in. See what you feel in your chest. Now, take your right heel to the right in sitting. And close your left eye and turn to the right as if you wanted to look over your right shoulder. Kind of a strange little move. So your right heel is out, your left eye is closed. You turn your head and your right eye to look over your right shoulder. Can you breathe while you do that? Come back. Bring your heel back. And just take your right heel out to the right. See if it got a little easier to take your right heel out. And let's try that to the left. So you take your left heel out. You turn your head to the left and um, close your right eye and your left eye looks over your left shoulder. 
a few times. So your weight ends up transferring a little bit to your right side in order to do that. Okay, undo your heel and just take your left heel out. See if it's getting a little easier to take that heel and go out with it. Rest and sitting, close your eyes, breathe in. See if the sense of expanding in your chest has changed a little bit. And go ahead and palm your eyes, hands over the eyes, fingers crossed. This time, notice which hand you put on top and try putting the other hand on top. So if, if your fingers are overlapping, And then come on up to standing and go for a walk. Notice what's happening in your walk now, how your eyes are feeling as you're walking. Your sense of your hips pivoting around yourself, whether how that's changing. Could you imagine walking on a tightrope? Maybe bringing your feet a little closer together as you're walking with your hips swinging a little bit more around yourself. And many of us, when we walk, we have a kind of the shoulders go one way, the shoulders go the other. Are you feeling a little bit more in the middle? Okay, and just come to stand up for a moment. Take your right heel out to the right and feel how the rest of your body responds, how your head and eyes can, can look to the left, how your arms can swing along with you as you do that. And then take your the right foot back to neutral and try it on the left side. And it might be that as you do that, as your left foot comes out, your right heel goes in a little bit. So it's like a two foot, a two foot pivot. See if you can get both feet going at the same time to swing around yourself. And can that movement get a little bigger in your body when you use both feet so that your right heel could go make a 90 degree turn? I'm going to just stand up for a sec. So the right heel turns so far that it's pointing to the left and then the left points to the right. Mm -hmm. Check your one foot balance. See how your one foot balance is being impacted by this lesson. And get a sense after you check, see what balance is like. And you know that part of balance that we've talked about where you turn your belly over the foot you're standing on. That's what we've been working on in this lesson. We've been working on it from the other end. We've been turning our foot under our belly. But now if, say you put your weight on your left foot, turn your belly so your belly's over your left foot. 
and see if that helps the one foot balance over there. And then shift your weight onto your right foot and turn your belly to the right. And go for a little walk thinking about that belly turn that as you put your foot in front of you, you turn your belly over it. And that that belly turn can come more from the legs and what you're doing in your legs than from the shoulders. Just trying to get the shoulders and the belly a little independent of each other. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or you could try marching in place and tapping your opposite knee and see how that movement is for you today. That movement is a good measure of what going up and down stairs is going to be like. Mm -hmm. And feel how your hips can swing from side to side around you like there's this axis and the hips are going around. Okay. And just as you stand there now, how big, how wide is your vision? Is it a little easier to scan left, right? or to scan up, down. And take your eyes and focus on something in front of you that you can see without looking up or looking down, just kind of neutral. And rotate your whole body, leaving your head and your eyes focused on that spot. So your hips go in a little circle around yourself. Trying to leave your head behind so your head stays looking at the front. Yeah. And then go for a walk looking for that sensation of your head staying right in the middle and it's a rotation around this axis as you're walking. And then come and have a seat. And I'm curious how this lesson has been for you. This is one I haven't taught very often and it's always interesting to see how a lesson lands for people of what, what they notice different, whether they notice a difference, um, Bill. I think everyone's muted. <laughs> I just saw Bill unmute himself, so I thought maybe he had something to say there. Uh, Elizabeth. I noticed that my left leg and side moved super easy just at the very first time I moved it. It moved easier than the right that i have been working. So and the my belly feel really tight. I, you know, when you say let go or put let your belly move over side to side, uh, I have this clenching in my belly. So this is one of um, sometimes the, the icebreaker I had today of some something your parents told you. Sometimes we have an internal voice that says hold your belly in. One of my teachers said uh, she grew up in um, in the southeast near the water and People were out at the beach all the time in bikinis, and her mother said, you have to have a flat stomach if you're going to wear a bikini. So in their family, they did sit-ups every day because they were working on having tight abs so that they would look good in a bikini. And, and that has been something that she's had to unlearn as an adult of when to pull in the belly and when not to pull in the belly. Um, yeah. And I do the boxing class, and the teacher keeps saying, uh, keep your core and belly tight. 
while you're doing the movements and exercises. Which, uh, so when you're, it, when you're doing a boxing movement, they want you to keep it tight. And that's partly if somebody punches you and everything is totally loose in your belly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There are times for tightening it. Uh, okay. Yeah. But walking is not one of those. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. But it, it's interesting. I mean, everybody is asymmetric and will have one side that's easier and not. And then with Parkinson's, it seems. How many of you feel your Parkinson's on one side of you more than the other? It's 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 a pretty pretty common pattern. So that means that you have to do sort of twice as much waking up work on on the side to get it to cooperate. So people are being quiet. I can handle hearing, oh, this lesson didn't do much for me or this one really did and I'm just in a different space or, you know, whatever. I'd, I'd love to hear. Um, Sharon. This, this was difficult for me. My, moving my feet and shifting my weight, mm -hmm. um, I found that challenging. Okay. Yeah, that, um, when I, it's a teaching a really radically different way of moving the instead of the shoulders going this way when you're walking it's helping to find that central axis and those movements can be challenging we we approach them in each class kind of from a different angle and sometimes we approach them from moving the torso over the foot and today we were kind of moving the foot under the torso to 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 get that and um We'll keep playing from lots of different angles, trying to get that pattern to, to go in the body a little easier. Yeah. Rich, could you come a little closer to your computer? Yeah. I found it useful to try to do some of these balancing things because my balance isn't good to start with. Uh -huh. It gives me a chance to exercise it, so, so to speak. So I want to um, change your language a little bit. Um, instead of my balance isn't very good, of what can I learn to do to find the balance points over each leg? So balance is a learnable skill. It isn't a talent. It isn't a um, sort of thing outside yourself. And so this practice and experimentation with different balance points and different ways of organizing is how you improve your balance. So, I mean, it sounds like you found today useful for that playing and experimenting. You find some new balance points that your brain otherwise doesn't think of. But the I just want to call you on the language because if you, if you think I have bad balance, your brain's going to do a great job of finding out that you have bad balance. Yeah, you're right. Um, and we want to change the way our brain is working to be looking for, does it feel better? Do I feel more balanced if I try it this way or that way? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Other comments? Doreen, it might help if you um, have the camera pan down to where you, when you position your feet, so we can briefly see whether we have it correct. Okay. I, I try and, and do it more as a, um, a discovery process. Um, and, but if, if sometimes if you're not understanding an instruction and you're like, am I, am I like even close to what she's saying? Feel free to ask in the moment too. I, I agree. I think once in a while, I, I'm not sure where we are in the process. Am I doing left hand or right hand? And uh, I'd like you to either say it again or demonstrate it a little bit too. I agree. Be nice uh, okay. to see you, your, 
at a distance some, in some of the positions that we're in. So what that will do is you'll see how Irene's body works, but you're <laughs> in your body. And so I, I, I'm listening, but it, it's, it, there, there's a, a, a general Feldenkrais principle of, of that it's you learning how to move your body that matters. And that, but there's also when you feel lost and you're like totally like, am I even in the right place? Am I doing anything like that doesn't really help you learn how to use your body. So it's finding the line between those, those two things. Right. And I, I hear the feedback. Uh, Colleen. I think this was a uh, more complicated for me too, but I think really important and I, it makes me wish we could do it twice. A lot of times we move from one to another, but, I think this walking and balancing and not falling and the vision, especially now that I wear a mask, I feel it, it kind of, it gets into my vision field a little bit. And, and I, I step up the curbs and I'm having to really kind of look more. And I, I just think it's a really important lesson. It was complicated and challenging, but I think it's, it makes me want to do it again. And it's yeah. better. <laughs> I'm planning on another related lesson for next Tuesday that um, I think it was, might have been Janet who asked last time, someone asked, you know, how do I, how do I see over my mask? How can people see that I'm smiling when I wear a mask? Um, and, and Colleen, what you're saying, how, how can I look down at the curb when I'm wearing a mask safely? Um, so we'll, we will be playing more with vision. Are we going to have a masked lesson? wear our masks. <laughs> Actually, it's nice not to wear it. So don't. It's really nice to be able to see mouths and smiles and eyes and just the, the whole face. Yeah. I, I, I think we probably won't do it masked. Um, I'm still self-conscious about walking into a bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ron. I, I was having trouble when I was doing the windshield wiper movement on my feet back and forth. You, it, my feet want to move smoothly, but my body does it in jerky motions. No, I don't know if that's neuropathy in my feet causing that or what, but I, I have a hard time doing that movement smoothly. Let's, uh, since we have a couple minutes, let's try a little experiment and see if this helps. Um, so everybody come to the front of your chair. And lift up the inside edge of, let's do our right foot first, the inside edge of the right foot. Like you could imagine and actually do it with your head and your eyes, you're curious if you stepped in something and you want to look toward the bottom of your right foot. Okay. And then try looking under the outside edge of the right foot. So your head and your eyes, you'll have to tip over to look the other way. Yeah. And a few times alternate. You're looking under your big toe side of your foot and you're looking toward under the little toe side of your foot. And as you're looking like this, see how your knee goes opposite your foot? It, it, it's like your knee goes left and right in order to lift the edge. Okay. Stop for a sec and now try and keep your knees still and lift one edge of your foot and then the other edge of your foot. And now put most of your weight on your left sit bone. And then see if you can rotate and do this windshield wiper a little on your right foot. See if that smooths it out a little bit. Irene, I have this, I have rubber soled shoes on. Take them off. Well, I can't. <laughs> 
uh, with windshield <laughs> shoes, it's going to be hard to windshield wiper your foot. You kind of have to, you could do it by lifting up. So pivot on your heel and then put it down again. Lift up the front of your foot, move it, and put it down. I think I need a new set of blades. And you need a new set of blades? <laughs> Or around here, there's too much tree pollen on the window. <laughs> and Ron, I'm curious, did that help the smoothness of the movement? Yes, it did. Okay. There's um, the waking up the side bending in the body which the, the looking under the foot and looking under the foot squeezes the ribs on one side and stretches them on the other side. And when we windshield wipe with the foot, there's a little bit of that sense of the ribs on one side squeezing and the ribs on the other side spreading. It's like your waist goes left and right opposite your foot. And when the waist goes opposite the foot, so my toes are pointing left, my, I'm pressing with my waist to the right. That allows a little smoother movement. Let's try it a little bit with the left foot. So first, lift up an edge of the foot and look under there, see if there's anything nasty on the bottom of your foot. And then try and leave your knee still and lift up the outside edge, put it down the inside edge. And this is a movement of the, the fibula bone, which we found sometimes you could put your hand, your thumb on top of your knee, your fingers pointing down, and this finger can feel the fibula bone, the second bone in the bottom part of the leg. And when you lift up one edge, the fibula either moves forward or backward. And then try the windshield wiper again. You could leave your finger in that kind of holster position, the, the thumb on the top, the fingers hanging down the outside of the knee and see if you can find the bone right about where this finger lands. And when you windshield wiper, you can feel that bone going backwards and forwards. It kind of comes around to the front, toward the front of your tibia, and it goes around to the back of your tibia as this movement happens in the foot. And sometimes people stop moving their fibulas, and that can make this movement very jerky because it just can't go smoothly unless the fibula is moving. So you can put your fingers on your fibula and help it move as you do the windshield wiper. So I, I have my, my fingers right on that long bone on the outside and I'm going around it. And then try on this side that same sensation when your foot goes left, your ribs go right. When your foot goes right, your ribs go left. I mean, I, I have difficulty um, looking at my feet. And if, I wonder whether that's because of my knees are being replaced or... Um, so say the first sentence again. You have, I, I missed I have it. The looking under, under, under my feet when I lift them up. On the right side, at least. On the, on the right side, and both, both sides. I wonder if that's because my knees have been replaced. Um, it, it's probably has to do with whether your fibula is moving. And um, a knee replacement doesn't usually, um, the fibula is not part of that because the fibula attaches to the tibia a little lower down. Um, but my guess is that it would be learnable, um, but this, 
I wish I could reach my hand in through the screen and feel and see if I could find your fibula and feel if it was moving. Um, and when I say look under and I'm looking like this, I can't see the bottom of my foot either. I just kind of can see like a, a little cave, a triangular cave that I'm looking under. It, it's, it's, I, I, I have difficulty lifting it up. You have difficulty lifting. If you just take your knee wider, does that take your floor <laughs> and lift it up a little? Okay. The reason, Irene, the reason that I, I'm, I'm kind of noticing this in particular is because Keith has a stiff right ankle and this is causing difficulty with walking. So I thought that might, um, might be related. There's definitely something in here, Keith, for you to work on that, that will help your, your, your walking. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get into it just in the next minute or so, but there's, um, I, I'm just putting it on my list to do another fibula lesson um, to, to to see. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and no, of course, you know, if if you ever want a private lesson to go, you know, I have this particular unique problem and I want to get this one solved. Feel free to contact me and and we can do that. Um, okay. Well, let's leave it there for today. This is, this is good. This lesson has opened up some things that we need to address and, and we'll do that over the next week or so and keep plugging away at just getting everything working as a team so that moving stays easier. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, Irene. Thank you so much, everyone.